Grace Kelly. So excited to be here in this snow globe with you all this morning. Sorry, I've got my like congestion. Hopefully, nobody's going to take this mic right after me. So I got to like lice all it. But um, so today we're talking about truth, and I am. That's like a big, heavy kind of conversation, and we're going to take it in a couple different directions. But to start us off. You all on your name tag, some of you wrote things and some of you probably did not. But the question that we asked was like, what is something that you value? And that's going to be kind of the framework that I'm going to be talking about truth in today. So did anybody write it down? Holly, my coworker, better have done it. <laughs> Holly, Kate, you did. Awesome. Well, I'm going to, for those of you who didn't, I'm going to give you a little prompt just in case you were like, what do I write? So let's see if I got this. Oh. Good morning, I'm Lizzie. <laughs> okay, so here's this slide that actually my friends over at AG Collaborative, if you guys haven't connected with them at all, they would be such a great addition to this group. But they, they did this exercise one time for us at OST, and they put up um, this slide that has a ton of different values on it, and they just said, take one minute, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take 60 seconds, and I want you to think, through, like, look at this list, if you can, even in the back, Rub those little eyes, Kate, and see if, see, if you can, see if you can focus. And think through what would be you know, one to four values that really stand out and really feel true to you in your life. So I'm going to just like count to 60-ish in my head and let you, let you soak this up. There's a lot of good ones, so like, but only three to four, OK? Use this as a water break. Okay, that's probably about 60 seconds. So since this is such a kind of amazing group of people who really values being together, I thought, why don't you turn to someone nearby you and share one of those that really sticks out to you and why you chose that. So maybe like say your name too. Little intro. All right, ding, ding, ding. I should have brought a little triangle, a little, a little bell. That's, where's the bell? Oh my gosh, there's a bell up front. I should have grabbed it. Dang it, Austin, you should have told me sooner. Of course, I see some people, some extroverts over there still want to keep chatting. Um, Thank you for doing that and for meeting your neighbors. It's so fun. We're here together. Might as well get to know each other a little bit better. So the reason that I, I, I wanted to just start out with this kind of idea of what are some things that you value is because I don't think we give it enough time and attention um, to really take some time and think through what are those things that really matter to me and that I want to you know, kind of fold into my decision making. So today, really what I'm going to be primarily talking about is kind of these three lenses that I use as I try to live my own truth. And they may work for you, and you may have completely different me methods and models that work for yourself, but these are just my own, and they've really helped me live a more intentional life that I feel um, has given me a lot of grounding, and it's given me a lot of really clear direction. So that's what I'm hoping to bring for you all today. And I hope we can kind of walk that path together. So this is kind of, like I said, first exercise, just thinking through what are some of those things that I value. Um, I'll share a couple of mine when I looked at this list. Um, I did it even just the other day with, with my friend Holly over here to say, OK, what do I look at, 
fresh eyes, what do I see? And are the same things standing out that stood out a year ago, that stood out two years ago when I first saw this? And uh, the reality is they are actually pretty similar. So one of mine is connection, which is why I'm so excited to be here connecting with you all this morning. One of mine is fun, which is really important to me. And it's not, it's like maybe a little embarrassing. Like that sounds weird to say that's embarrassing, but it actually is really important to me. I really like having fun. And I, as a mid thirties human, don't want to be ashamed by that. Like I want to be, if there's an option, I'm signing up, you know? Um, the other one for me that really stands out, which may seem a little unique, but is future generations. I'm sure some people in this room are, are similar in that. So that's something I actually do think about quite a bit. So that's kind of my, my first, like, first lens, I would say, that I look through things with. Now, my second lens is kind of this unique thing. Maybe it's not that unique, but raise your hand if any of you are bucket listers. Like, does anybody have a bucket list, life list? y'all write those down or just in your head oh my god that's amazing uh, gabby you too okay see this is like the pool is shrinking and i'm into that i like so i too am a bucket lister erica of course you're a list maker i already knew that about you um so that's this other space that has actually really helped me kind of hone my decision making around what's important, what do I want to spend my time and energy on? And I, it's something that I've actually been doing since high school. So when I was a high schooler, I, I found this Google Doc the other day. Are, you, are we Google Doc people? Okay, there we go. We got that in common. That's good. Uh, so I found this Google Doc and it was like all these old life lists or bucket lists or like what I got to do in high school lists, you know, and I went through to see like, are there trends? Are there things that kind of like transcend um, from who I was as a high schooler to who I am today? And I will, uh, I'll read you a couple because I wrote them down. So my very first bucket list in high school, I had some pretty aspirational goals. Like I really wanted to go on a cruise. <laughs> pretty big things, you know, it was pretty exciting back then. I really wanted to visit all the continents, you know, and I didn't want to lose touch with my girls when I went to college. And uh, those were, those were, that's what I was focused on at that time. Um, as I looked forward to my sophomore year in college, that was kind of the next, I, I would say I'd, I've done this every couple years. So my sophomore year in college, I actually got a little more aspirational. I got a little more dialed in, and I said I wanted to graduate with a 3.5 GPA, which is like fine, but it's not like that exciting. But anyways, that was a goal, whatever. And I never wanted to cheat on a boyfriend. <laughs> I am sad to say I cannot cross that off my list. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. Um, I also wanted to become a big sister. I wanted to participate in the big sister, big brothers, big sisters program. And I, I actually started um, kind of having a couple trends that came out that I wouldn't have necessarily been able to articulate at the time, but I can see now actually were around connection and really relational development. So I said that I wanted to drive home and see my little brother's varsity soccer games more. And I wanted to go see my Uncle Bill's in his church choir. Like, that, I think those are kind of unique for a sophomore in college to be like, I'm going to go to this choir concert. Um, but I think that that was like me starting to identify the values in investing in relationships and like the real significance for me to maintain connection. So... Um, let me go on, move on to my senior year of college. I promise I won't do this the entire talk, but it's just like, oh my God, it took me on a path, y'all. So anyways, when I was looking at my senior list in college, I definitely had some that were more focused on adventure. You know, probably what you're thinking of when you think of a bucket list. It's like, I want to climb a mountain. Um, and I do still. And I want to live by the ocean and like all these skydiving, you know, big aspirational goals. 
Um, or as my stepson said, you were really aspirational then. And I was like, I'm actually still aspirational. It's just like different. But anyway, um, I also started baking in some things around learning at this age. So that was when I was like, I want to learn how to make a quilt and whittle and do these other interesting things. But then I got kind of those classic life goals that were on my list, like get married, rescue an animal, or like be a good mom, you know? Not knowing if I would get married or would be a mom or any of those things, but that was kind of just like on the list. It was simple, it's kind of classic standard stuff. Well, things continued to evolve. And I would say when, by the time I got my first job, as Kelly mentioned, I worked at the Chamber of Commerce in their leadership development programs. And that's really when I started to like understand systems thinking and like the intersectionality between a lot of different kind of concepts. And it was like, it opened my eyes in a lot of ways to say, I don't want to settle for just these kind of standard like goals. I want to be really intentional about my time and my energy. And uh, that's when I started building out this list to be more thoughtful and more informed by my values. So that's kind of where this layering started to happen for me, at least. And that's where instead of just like, get married, it was like, no, no, no. I want like a really healthy marriage. Like I want a happy marriage. I want to marry someone that makes me better and that I'm like motivated and inspired by. So it started like helping me level up my expectations for my own life in non-simplistic terms. And, um, and I spent a lot of time thinking about this and I continue to spend a lot of time thinking about this. So um, even this example, let me say what my next one was, but oh yeah, so, so instead of like being a big sister or participating in that program, it's like, what am I really trying to do here, right? And so I actually, this was, again, I was like 22 maybe, 21 years old, and I'm like, instead of like wanting to be a big sister, I actually want to make the investments, which, is, which was part of the Grand Rapids Public Schools program. I was like, I actually wanna do whatever I can do today to start investing in the Grand Rapids Public Schools, so by the time, if I have kids, I actually feel comfortable sending my kids there. And so it was like, that takes a lot more effort actually turns out, you know, cause it means like I need to invest my own time and energy into programming. I need to figure out how my workplace can be a better partner for GRPS. I need to like help understand what are the complexities that are prohibiting people from wanting to send their kids there. Um, so it got, it got a lot more complex, um, but in a way that made my decision making actually more clear because it was like, is this contributing towards a greater goal or is it not? So those are a couple kind of like ways that I would say things started to, to get a little bit more complex and layered. So my current bucket list is bucketed with these kind of greater intention statements these days. And it's much more, um, articulated on this like future vision casting for myself. So it's the buckets are adventure and travel, learning, love, friends and family and impact. And if you think about some of the lists or some of the words that I called out at the very beginning, those sound a lot very similar to fun, connection, community and future generations. And I, I didn't do that intentionally. It's just like sort of the natural evolution of those areas that really show to be important in my life. So I think that's pretty interesting. I, I would encourage if you haven't done it, you know, it's an exercise in sort of like honing in on those values. But I don't put everything in my life on a bucket list, right? Like who's got time? It's already like 17 pages long. Sorry. It's like it's it's. It's dramatic, but, but we don't have time for all of that. And so I needed this other layer of decision making on like, how do I live this authentic life that feels really true to me? And that was where I started thinking about kind of these impact areas. And um, that's something I actually think that Creative Mornings does a really nice job with. And I, I know there are people in this audience that are very dialed in on that already. Kelly, I think you're a great example of that. Um, 
in the way that you live your life and even how you chose or partner with the community from Madcap to Leanne to you know, being really intentional about creating an open and inclusive environment and partnering with local community businesses. So that is kind of this next layer for me, my kind of third layering as I go around impact areas. So raise your hand if you have ever thought about like the areas that you're really driven to impact. Yeah, so it's like, I think within these past couple years, we've actually been asked to do that more than ever, right? It's like a lot of people took a hard look at kind of their lives and said like, am I lining up really with the things that I say that I care about? And that's, that's like where I'm at. That is, that is where I've been and it's where I'm at and it's where I wanna continue to push and it's also where I hope to like encourage others to push on because there's a lot of ways that we make really tiny decisions in our lives that actually could create pretty significant impact if we just think about it a little bit more and just pause and say like, who is this impacting, right? So for me, um, turn my little paper notes because I don't have a printer, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm like, oh my God, I gotta handwrite my notes. This is intense. Um, okay, where are my little, my little impact notes so I don't lose myself? So the areas for me in like kind of reflecting on my own experiences, which you all obviously have the opportunity to do within your own lives, it's like, I wanna impact women. That's something that's really significant to me. And so that becomes now layered on, on some of these other areas that I also want to long-term you know, do in my life. So when I think about today, when I look at my bucket list and I put things on like, be a good friend, like that's not specific enough. What does that actually mean? If I say I wanna be a good mom, what does that actually mean? And how does that layer with both my values and my social impact areas? So I'll give you a couple examples. Like as, as I want to be a good mom, right? It's not just like showing up in the morning and like making breakfast. It's like, no, I want to be, I want to actually show you like what a professional woman looks like in your life. And I want to bring you to work with me. And I want you to like experience seeing more professional women because that wasn't actually something that I saw a lot of when I was a kid. And what I want you to like, feel that a mother doesn't just have to be, you know, the person who's like looking out for safety. Like, I feel like that's this role that a lot of women play is like, put your coat on and like, make sure you have a snack. It's like that, that's a part of it, right? But I also want to be a fun element in your life. So when my stepson, and he does this every single summer, it's like you get those summer thunderstorms where it's like, just coming down and it's warm. And he's like, we gotta go out there. And it's like, in my, in my upbringing, there's this piece that's like, no, 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 it's raining, we gotta put a raincoat out. Like, that's not necessarily me, but that's like in me in like how I was raised. Do you know what I mean? And I've had to really like challenge that and say like, yeah, I wanna get out there too because I value fun and I want you to see that moms can also be fun. And so therefore, like I, that's an actual thing that I have to say to myself in my head so that I can like get my ass out there and run in the street with my stepson. And I hope that that's imprinting on him, right? Like I hope that that's, that matters someday that he is seeing what a version of parenting can look like differently than maybe his friends or maybe what I saw even. So I would say the same thing goes for what I think about when I think of like being a good friend. It's like, yeah, I have some really good friends, but like, what does it mean to show up? And I'll give you one example of like, something that I wrote down one time was like, I never want my friends to feel like they have to pitch me something. Like, I don't know, some of you graduated college and you like, everybody moved and everybody's got their first job and then you like get these random calls from people that you like kind of knew and they're like hey I'm selling life insurance and you're like oh god I don't know um, and it's like <laughs> and, and you like shut them down or shut them out right but like for me I wanted to be like I want to be the friend that's like you don't have to call me I'm gonna call you I want I want you to know that like I believe so deeply in you and your ability 
that I want to like reach out to you with opportunities. And for those of you in the room that are like entrepreneurs or in sales or in any space where you do have to be like kind of pitching people, like the feeling of someone just giving you work or like giving you support is such a relief. And I, I, I say that because I graduated in sort of the recession where it was like, I couldn't get a job. And so like, I know that feeling of like, I don't know, like, lo like the confidence is not there and you're like, self doubt is like through the roof and you're just like, I just want someone to like help me out, you know? And so I, I remember I went, this example of like, I, I made these little paintings and I, did, I went to a little art show and I brought my little paintings with me and my aunt showed up and she was like, oh my gosh, I just, I cannot wait. I've been looking forward to this, you know? And she wanted to buy one of my little paintings and I was like, they were $20. And I was like, no, no, you don't need, I was like embarrassed, immediately embarrassed. And I'm like, you don't need to buy one of my paintings. You're my aunt, you know, like, come on, you can have it for free or whatever. And she was like, no, you painted this and I want to buy this from you, you know? And then the next time I went to her house, it was like framed. Oh my God. I, I told my husband this story and I'm like crying as I'm telling him, but it's like she invested in me. She believed in me and she just like made it happen and she didn't make me feel embarrassed about it. And like, that is what I want to bring to my friends. And that's what I want to bring to my community is like, if there's a way that I can help you, I want to help you. And I want to like be present and part of your success journey because I think that that's, that's like part of what I value. I, at the end of my days, you know, if I look through kind of like all the things that I care about, I care about women succeeding. I care about connection. I care about authentic relationships. And like, it doesn't happen accidentally. So that those are just like, ways that I've kind of like over the years been able to say, what does that look like? And really outline that for myself, not just like ambiguously, what does being a good friend look like? But like, what does that mean? It means showing up to the funerals, right? It means like the good times and the bad times. It means celebrating people, even if they're not having these like traditional um, markers of celebration, like babies and weddings, right? It's like, no, we can celebrate beyond that. And so actually these, um, I'll give you one more example of like the way kind of just putting it out there for myself has actually changed behavior. So one thing that I put on my bucket list many moons ago, this is when I was in one college version, um, when I was also thinking about kind of connection and what does like care for others look like. I was dating a guy at the time whose grandparents had moved to Michigan recently and his grandmother was like, not gonna make it. That was why they moved. And so I said, I gotta make sure that I like remain friends with his grandfather. So we were kind of pen pals at the time. I was living in Lansing and he was living in Grand Rapids. I said, I'm gonna maintain my friendship with Bob until the end of days. <laughs> like very poetic, I know. Um, and, and then, and I like wrote it down with intention, right? Like this is something I have to commit to. I want to commit to. And m me and that guy, we broke up, we graduated college. I entered into new relationships and so did he, but I maintained that I was going to like follow through on this commitment that I had made. And so we stayed pen pals, virtual pen pals, cause you know, the 2000s, like whatever. Um, so we would email back and forth and, and we did for years and years until like, I guess maybe five years ago. So that was like an eight or nine year relationship that we had. And um, I, was, I was able to actually even be with him um, when he took his final breath because we were able to maintain that friendship and I say that because it's like, there were a million days where it didn't make sense 
to continue on with this friendship, right? Like when we broke, when I broke up with that guy or he broke up with me, I don't remember how it happened, but um, like that would have been a time to just say like, all right, I can let his grandfather go too, you know? But it was like, no, he still needs me and I still need him. And like, I gained just as much from that relationship as he did. So like I, because I had written that down, I was able to maintain and I was able to continue to say, these are the actions that that looks like. It means continuing to email. It means showing up even when I have a million other things to do. Um, so for me, that's where like a bucket list and like just that intentional um, vision of what do these things actually look like kind of helped guide me on a path that I'm super grateful for. And that really took me in, into a positive, positive headspace. So those are a couple examples of kind of how my bucket list has helped guide me. So as I kind of share these different ideas with you today, I, I guess I just want to say, um, if you haven't taken the time to think about like what are those things at the end of your life that you want to look back on and say like, yeah, I did that and I, I, that like really showed up. My actions actually aligned to the things that I said I care about. If I say I care about women, what does that actually mean? Did I move the needle? Like, and just caring about women, what is that, right? So I've been able to actually, for me, thankfully, integrate a lot of the things that I care about personally and line them up with other organizations that also care about those same things, right? So like within the company that I work for, OST, it's like we also say that we care about you know, our people. That's like the primary message that we talk about is like honoring our people. And so we've actually had a lot more discussions to say, well, what does that look like? How do our health benefits reflect that? How do our career paths actually share that? I had a call with our VP of talent yesterday and it was like, we actually do all this work around making sure and like validating that we have no gender disparities within our compensation models. You know, we're actually doing the work that lines up to the things that we say we care about as a company and things that I personally care about. So that makes me feel a lot better going to work in the morning when I know that like we're lining up against some stuff that I believe in. And, and I think that that's the opportunity that I hope, if nothing else, you know, we all take away today is that every decision, whether it's like the clothes you're putting on in the morning, the music you're listening to on whatever app you're listening to music on or the trips you're booking, like they all matter because they are all creating impact. And it's like, what's the impact that you want to create that's authentically you? Because like, just because my impact areas are one thing, yours might be completely different based on your own lived experiences. But I would say like, I feel much more kind of confident in my day to day and, and driven, like I'm going somewhere. I'm not just wandering. I'm, I'm on a path to create change and to create impact. And they are aligned to my values and they are aligned to my impact areas and they are aligned to my personal goals. And that's what I just like hope to talk a little bit more about with you all today. So I think that um, that's the way I choose to live my truth. And I think that it's, it's actually made decision making easier in some ways because it's a framework, right? It's a lens that I can look at things through. So my husband made this comment yesterday when we were just like chatting about this. It's like he goes to the grocery store and sees like a thousand different coffee bags on the wall, right? But because we've talked and we have like alignment on some of our values, both of like what we consume and what we purchase, it's like what, where once upon a time, he would have been like, where's the can of Folgers? You know, like what's the cheapest and what's like the easiest, right? It's like now we have a different lens to say like, well, we actually care about the planet too. We want to make like better impact in the sustainability realm. So like, are there, is there packaging that's actually recyclable? 
is there a B Corp that we can like say, okay, we actually, this is pre-vetted, so we believe that like the people that are picking the coffee beans, roasting the coffee, are actually being paid fair wages. So it's like all, every decision we make actually has so much impact. And when we make those different decisions, it makes us feel at least like we're living truly. We're living in accordance to our own guiding principles. And, and that's been uh, a real gift to us. So that's, that's what I'm here to talk about today. And I'm just so grateful for, for being here with the Creative Mornings crew and kind of want to open it up for discussion or even like pushback if anybody has kind of ways that they've done this in their own lives that's been hard or easy. I will say I'm, I'm not perfect and it is like always a jockeying effort, right? Like there's not, there's not ever like a clear winner in my, in my world because I have like a variety of things that I care about. For some people that are like purists, right? They might say like, I will always choose this over this. Um, I don't have that because that's like, I'm a bit broader than, than like a single issue, but yeah, Gabby. Do you focus on like a Yeah. Um, like, are, do you sit down there and go, you know what, what main things have I maybe been lacking and that I want to focus more on this year? Like, how do you, like, kind of reflect and, like, constantly, like, re-integrate, like, your goals and stuff? Love that. So, my friend Erica is over here. You guys should talk afterwards because this girl is, like, a compulsive <laughs> evaluator of her goals. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a good question. So I, I would say um, from a work perspective, one thing that we do is sort of like evaluate things after a project is done. So Holly and I re recently worked on a big project where we went through after the fact. We went through it, we started it with intention that said like, hey, we want to make sure that we're diversifying our spending, that we're spending with local businesses as often and much as we possibly can that we want to like make sure that our, our vendor list is diverse, things like that. So we kind of went into it with intention. But then I do think that this idea of like evaluating it along the way actually gives you a better perspective on like, well, did I actually do that? Am I actually doing that? And so for, for me, from a work perspective, I do more of that like look back. Um, and honestly, one thing that I've been maybe most shocked about over the years is like, even when you are being really intentional, there are still these like big spends or these big chunks of like time and energy that you almost like don't think about. So I'll give you like flights or, you know, like it's like, oh, we're doing all these little things, but then we're spending all this money with like United or, you know what I mean? It's like, ah. So it's not all about spending, but it is about um, reflecting. I, I want to actually continue to get better about that, and I think that that's a great example. But I do, I do use my bucket list as kind of like an evaluative tool at least once a year or when I know that I've kind of like a, crossed something off the list. I go in there, and even if it wasn't on the list, sometimes I go back and add it as like a sort of a tracker to say like at the end of my days, this is a list of things I'm proud of. Kelly, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Lance. Um, okay, because I know you. What yeah. are some tips that you would offer people who are here who might not own a business or be a freelancer who work for a company, how mm -hmm. they can start to find these values and make impact within the companies they work for? Because I feel like you've done a really good job of that. And mm -hmm. That can be really hard sometimes when you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can make a difference or have a voice with this big, massive company I work for. So what are a few tips you would give people? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question, Kelly. So I actually had a conversation one time with one of our office managers um, at OST, and I was like, "Do you even realize the impact you have?" Right? And she's like, "What do you mean, Lizzie? Leave me alone. You know, we have a very good relationship, but it's catty. <laughs> it's like, Ugh. and uh, <laughs> I love her. Uh, anyways, and she was like, "What are you talking about?" Right? And it's like, just her alone, it, like, has this opportunity to. She's constantly ordering catering, right? And it's like, how do you make differing decisions around your catering? How do you, if, you're, if you care about sustainability like I do, how do you like say, I don't wanna have the silverware? How do you make sure that you're not offering 
bottled water. I mean, I know these are really little examples. I'll use Kate as another actual, like, really good example. I did a um, design thinking workshop with her and her husband recently. And I know that Kate cares about the environment, but she wove that into kind of her actual, the way that she was doing her work. You had to read some articles. And the articles were like, guess what? about environmental issues like climate change. And it's like, oh, she just happened to choose those articles, you know? And she showed up with compost bags. And so it isn't like these major things. Like I'm not, I'm not in charge of huge, huge budgets either, but I am able to say, this is a decision we could pretty easily shift just by thinking about it differently. So it's not always like these cost differentials, it's just intention. It's just putting it on, like having the conversation on the front end to say, are there ways we could create impact with these decisions that we're making? So, you know, again, I know a lot of people in this room, but it's like when we're getting office swag, you know, you can get it from the internet or I can get it from a woman owned business like Green Gifts. And I, and I can partner with my friend Kelly to say, let's get, let, let's take it in step further and we have conversations around like, well, what are sustainable options if we're going to be getting swag? How do we make that those decisions even better, even beyond the fact that we're just supporting a woman owned business or a local business? So it's like, it's just intention. But I think that if you don't write it down, it often just kind of goes by the wayside. Or if the person that you report to if you report up through someone, doesn't care about it, it's easy to not bring it up. And what I would say is like, bring it up. Because your, your team, it might not matter to everybody, but it will matter to some people. And like in this market, in this labor market, it's like if you want people to buy into what you're selling, then you have to do it intentionally. So I even actually in talking with you one day, I was like, a lot of businesses have values written on their walls or on their website. And like, as an, if you're an employee, I would say like, don't be afraid to say, this is this thing over here. Can we like talk about how that rolls through? Can we talk about how decision making lines up to that? Because I think that that really is the future and that is what's being asked of millennials and Gen Z is like living with hypocrisy feels kind of gross. And so the more we can call that out and talk about it and have trusting relationships with the people that we work with to really like poke at those things, I think the better going to work every day is certainly going to feel. Leanne. First off, this conversation is so good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to piggyback off of what Kelly was asking, is there any tried and true resources that you have for bringing up some of these, these um, conversations in a room where maybe not everyone's on the same page about it, or you know, even just bringing these in? Do you have any that you typically pull from? I mean, I know every creative problem will require specific solving, but is there anything that you find resource-wise that's really great to hold? You know, I think it's it's an area that I'm like continuing to explore, actually, if I'm being honest. So like this is a space that I'm really interested in and and uh, some businesses and organizations already kind of have their values like pre-vetted. Obviously, some of this starts happening at a strategic like visioning level. Um, but everybody is different. And so I'll, I'll use my friend Brad, his business as, as an example, like Brad is a veteran and he that's something that he really cares about that might be different than somewhat what somebody else cares about but that's authentic to him right and so i think having the conversation for him he can he can lead in that way that says like this is why i care about this i this is my lived experience this is who i am and therefore i want to make sure that this is an area that i'm like giving back to right so i think just like starting with that uh, examination of like who are we? And like businesses are a who, right? Organizations are a who. Like we have roots. We came together for some reason. And what is that reason, right? And so it's like peeling back a little bit to say like, what was our start? And who are we today? So even when, you know, I look back at my own bucket lists, right? It's like, 
who I was when I said that I wanted to maintain my friendships with my besties. It's like, it's the same person. I'm just I'm a bit more grown up these days. I'm a bit more evolved, thank God. But it's like, I think that's the same thing for organizations and groupings of people. It's like, there's, there's truth in the roots. There's truth in the origins there. And I think to like take time and energy to talk about that. But again, it really does take trust as well. That would be this other like really key element. So I would say either like start with what's already exists or examine kind of the roots. And, and those are kind of the two ways that for me, I would say are good starting points. Any other questions or thoughts or experiences that you all have had? I have a thought. I'm a designer, so I'm a doer. I don't make a lot of lists. And I do that in <laughs> life and work. I'm just, I find I'm on autopilot. Sure. So I think that's one of the key takeaways I've heard here is I am living my core values. Mm -hmm. But if I can get off autopilot and just like dial in and tune into those things, I think I can elevate them so much more. Yeah. And I think in the practice and exercise of that, then you can start building upon how you're going to be more tactical and apply them. I just feel like you're such a go-getter, and I want to get there. But it is exercise and practice and energy, so just be more conscious. Yeah, I love that. And, and like, I totally get that this is just my method, right? Like, obviously, there weren't that many people that are bucket list in this room, and that's 100% fair. But I do think the idea of, like, who do I want to be, right? Like, I, I was in a group recently, and they said, you know, if what what was etched on your tombstone, you know? And it was like, oh, that's a little dark. But like what I said in that moment, just like I said, I wanted to say like, that bitch showed up. <laughs> like, and I do, I want to show up. I want to show up for my people. I want to show up for this life, right? And uh, it's, it's short and fleeting. So we got to just like grab it and go for it. And I would say like, I don't want to just be someone that like gets to the end and is like, oh, did I create impact here or not? I don't, I don't want that. So I think putting some, th some thought into, so what, what do I want? What do I want written up about me in, my, in the newspaper if newspapers still exist at that point? Or, you know, I don't know. It's like you got to back into it somehow. Yes. Yeah. Why they should do something. Or even delivering difficult news. It's called SBI, situation behavior impact. Mm. So you could say, you know, the situation was we had the best way and the behavior was like we chose to buy the cheapest thing. Yeah. Important. Yeah. The impact is some of the people that showed up didn't value that decision we made. So, like, just, I don't know, I've used it in professional and personal. So SBI. Good way to uh, really address any issue. And I think the way I learned it was delivering, it was in the topic called, you know, called delivering difficult information. Okay. But it doesn't have to be right. difficult information. It really applies to almost any discussion, I would yeah. say. <laughs> I love that. I, I've heard that some organizations, we don't do this at OST, but some orgs will like, almost start every meeting with like, here are our guiding principles as like a reminder. You know, certainly we have them kind of in posted, but like how often do we do this as individuals, right? Like that's, I think we need reminders personally to say, okay, if I care about these different things, like what's the makeup I'm buying? Where, where am I buying my shoes? You know, like I was, I was thinking about that even when I was getting dressed this morning. I was like, oh my God, am I going to be a hypocrite getting up on stage? It's like, no, I'm not. Like I feel good about the fact that I, you know, got my boots from Mira's on Leonard. And like, it's not always going to work, right? I'm not saying like I don't shop online, but it's like, to just have some things in your head to say like, is this worth it? Do I need this? You know, does this line up? Are, is there another option that might take me another 30 seconds? You know, any Google Maps people here, you know, they got their new little leaf on the Google Maps when you're like Googling where to go. And it's like, is it worth it? Can I take an extra one minute to take the like lower carbon footprint path? Yeah, I probably can do that. I pro not all, maybe not every time, but it's like just having those little lenses of thought can actually create 
really, really significant impact that I believe has the potential to live or to like exist as a more just and equitable world. And like, I want to do that. I want to line, line up for that. So question from the videographer in the back. <laughs> uh, you seem to be very like confident in, in, in who you are. So, um, but I wonder, how do you navigate situations where you you feel like you're the only person in the room that actually cares about the thing you're talking about? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so, it's it's tough. So he asked around like, if you're the only one in the room that cares, I would say you're probably not the only one in the room that cares. Typically. But I will say I have been in rooms where somebody else said something and it and it meant that I didn't have to say it. And it was like, you know what I mean? It was like, thank you for bringing this up so that those of us who maybe represent a certain perspective don't always have to be the ones to bring it up. So I'll give you a really like simple example that's like I was raising some uh, I was I was bringing some energy I will say to improving our maternity leave policy at work and I was and I was also pregnant so you know it's like uh, may, maybe not like the best time <laughs> or so I found out um, but in reality like I actually had I also talked to some friends about it at work and said like hey this is something that I'm like really struggling with and I don't want to be the only voice advocating for myself. And so I actually had some men on different teams, some other women that were like already beyond having kids and they showed up and they, they also like helped to kind of bring that message forward. And that actually made all the difference. And, you know, we all know that that happens same with like, you know, my, one of my, uh, friends who's on a committee with me who's African-American, she's like, I don't want to keep bringing the, like, f raising the flag on this. I want you to raise the flag on my behalf. And I think that that's this opportunity of, like, bravery and courage. It's like, bring it up because you're probably not the only one in the room and you also have the opportunity to be a real advocate for others. And, like, also, again, like, we only have one life and like we have to jump in like we have to do more because we are going on a path of like consumption and spending and with the environment that it's like if we're not lining up there's not somebody else that's going to do it so that would be my only kind of hope there is that we just do it <laughs>